Hi guys and guys, AJ here, and we're going to talk about a new discussion that's sort of hitting the world of the internet, interweb, um, about Apple CarPlay. So there are a few questions that people have asked me um, with the future of the iPhones being portless. So I'm going to answer some of those questions, or try to at least, or come up with some sort of ideas. So check out the video. So one of the questions that has come up is if Apple go portless with their new phone or their next phone, um, how am I going to plug it into my car and play Apple CarPlay? Now some of the apps I know you can through Bluetooth from your phone to the Apple CarPlay um, do work. So like text messages, things like that with certain models. Um, there are a few cars now, not many, but a few that are now doing even more over Bluetooth, um, or if you've got Wi-Fi in the car, maybe, um, which only normally rich people do. Um, and that's about it. So all the other hundreds of thousands of cars that have been sold in the last few years with Apple CarPlay, if you've got an iPhone, buy the new iPhone, how is it going to work? So would they somewhere in the software, the iOS 15 perhaps, have something in that Bluetooth. Um, would it be 5.1 or a new one that maybe they come out with, I don't know. Could Apple be allowed to do that or was it Bluetooth as a, a patent thing? Um, how would that go? So, uh, what was I saying? So yeah, so would they be able to then share every single bit of detail through Bluetooth, um, I don't know. Again, you know, when Apple decided to do the jobby of getting rid of the port for your headphones, so everyone had to go Bluetooth, and they were like, oh, actually, and then when people complained about it, they then brought out um, a connector that you could then put at the bottom of your phone and then play through there. So that's fine. But at the moment, the devices for you to try and use Bluetooth or use, sorry, use CarPlay with cars that don't have it um, is a little bit of money, a bit expensive. And I think if Apple were to sort of go down that route, I think that'd be quite rude. I think what we need to do is have an either or sort of thing with the phone where you can have both. Um, and then as time goes on, more and more cars will be capable of doing, if Apple can't do it through their phone, be able to pair up with every single app um, that you put on there, whatever apps you put onto your CarPlay stereo. I think already you can put Google Maps on there, et cetera, et cetera, and your text messages, but you need a wider range. And I think, you know, what would be good is if Apple CarPlay could actually have or be able to use without a phone. Um, you know, maybe you could put, you know, your SIM card or have two SIM cards for one number, put it in there, and that's it. You wouldn't need to use a phone then. I think that would be good. Um, but then people could moan straight away and say, oh, but I've got to have two tariffs. Well, why? You know, tariffs could be so cheap now. Um, prices are ridiculously cheap. Uh, very low cost indeed. So you could, theoretically, just do that. Um, you know, with, with some of them, um, most of them with GPS, um, with sat nav, you know, you have a little socket for USB, uh, not USB, sorry, um, for an SD card, for an update version of your uh, sat nav system. But this would be similar to that. So you put in your SIM card slot and that's it. it. It comes from that. So the network will be already in your stereo, car stereo, and then it'll pick up straight to that number. Um, so you could do that, or if that's too much, just better Bluetooth. That's what we need. Um, which I think Bluetooth 5, 5.1 is pretty much very good. You know, Range-wise is amazing. 
the sound lag, there's no in there. Um, it's very good with huge files to send very quickly indeed. So I think Apple can do it. I don't think it's just a stereo thing. I think it's more about the phone and going portless. You know, I love the idea. I think being portless, you know, you don't need to carry wires. You know, if you've got, say, like a Cree charger, you know, people say, yeah, but you've got to plug that in. Not necessarily. There's Cree chargers out there that you can pre-charge. You then put it down, put your phone on top, and that's it. It charges straight away. So, you know, it is easy um, and it is easier. And I just, I just think that at the end of the day, that's what people need to do is buy Cree chargers. Get used to the fact, get used to the idea, get the ones that are, are in a cradle where you just stand it in there. Um, because those ones, the phone doesn't move or anything like that. It just stays there perfectly and then it will charge at 80% at slow to preserve the battery life a bit more. And then from that, obviously, um, it goes very slow. When you wake up in the morning, you're charged, your phone is fully charged. Um, you know, and with Qi charging, Qi charging, hopefully in the next phone, will be just as fast as they allow um, the bottom plug-in charger, which I think is probably no more than 25 watts. I don't think Apple phones allow you to go any faster than that. So, not like Samsung's and Oppo and Huawei, they charge like 65 watt. But again, it doesn't, I don't, I, I, you know, I don't think their battery life would be great after two, three years of charging like that. Every single day. With the speeds that they're going now, um, certainly with the iPhone 12, 12S, 12S, Pro, Pro Max, um, you know, up to 15 watts, that's, that's good. That's better than what, how quick they've done that from iPhone 10 to that is pretty quick. Um, considering where we started with the first iPhone, where I think it was like a five watt charger. I mean, really? Um, to, to what now they are, what 18 or 20 watts you can do now, 25, um, it's pretty quick. So it, you can see where Apple are going with this, with the Cree charging side of things. I think they're gonna really up it really fast in the next few phones. You're gonna get a real good speed. Um, and that's something obviously that I can't wait for. Um, I think it'll be quite exciting to see how that pans out. Um, the other thing I think as well is that having it portless, like I said in my previous video, perhaps will make it more waterproof. Um, people still drop their phones in toilets, people still drop their phones in the sea, sea salt, um, in swimming pools. Um, you know, you do things like that, it's not gonna last because of chlorine, things like that. So it's all right Apple making things splash proof, sweat proof, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you look at the Apple Watch, you can actually go in the water with that, you can swim with that, you can wear it in the shower, and then it's got the side bit where it goes beep, 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 at the side. What about Apple phones? Phones could have that, couldn't they? The iPhones could have that um, to disperse the water out. Because um, I've known that when I've had mine, I had mine in the shower, and then the sound become muffled, the speakers became muffled and I had to play music or shake it out, tap it a bit, to then get the water out, if you like, or the bubble that it created, shielded. Um, and then eventually it cleared. That can't be very good for it. So they really need to do the eye, you know, change it. Um, you know, these phones are expensive, you know, upwards of, what, seven, 800 pounds plus. Um, and for something like that, you know, even for a, a MacBook, something like that, that's over a thousand pounds from what, 900 upwards, you want that to be a little bit sort of splash proof as, as normally with an iPad, you know, a, 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 a Mac, you're not gonna go in the swimming pool with it, but you might be working, you might have a, an open drink or something at home and ding, or you're in an office, wouldn't it be good if they made that bit splash proof? So then if you did pour coffee or tea on there or fizzy drink, it's not gonna knacker the innards. Um, and I think that's maybe something that Apple have not looked at doing, or maybe think, oh, it'll make it too heavy or, or whatever. 
All you need is a very, very thin layer of some see-through plastic, flexible plastic underneath the keys. And that's it, all right, over on top of the keys. And it's very simple. So I think, you know, Apple are not looking at that so much. They're looking at more of design um, and recyclability. And something like a bit of plastic would recycle, especially when it's long. It's not, you know, little marbles, it's a long thing. So it's nothing to do with, you know, fret to fish, it, it will work fine. So they need to do something like that. And with iPads, the same. Um, but we'll see, you know, the prices are seeming to be going up all the time with these things. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, my thoughts are, so I can't really speak so much about CarPlay because I haven't got CarPlay. Um, I've got an old Nissan Qashqai. So, but what I've seen and what people have said and I've looked at it online, it is a bit wrong if Apple do go down this route and they don't have something in place to make it better um, for them. Because if they can't plug in, they're gonna to have to make MagSafe some way of transferring information. Uh, I don't know how they would do that, but they'd have to think of some way of doing it or by sticking something on the back of the phone or the side of the phone, you know, like I say, MagSafe really, to read the information and channel it into a cable to your connected device I don't know um, but we'll see what Apple come up with hopefully something you know if they do go completely portless um, for speaker reasons and things like that as well um, and look at the, some of the concepts that have been out there over the years I think it'd be very interesting to see what they come up with how they do it and is it going to be a wow factor um, because they do need to bring something to the park now because it's it's just getting a bit lame. I think Apple are, you know, I love the design of the 12s, don't get me wrong, I can't wait to get mine when my contract runs out. I have 11 Pro Max, but there's nothing fantastic. Um, you know, like I said before with my, my last video in themes, they need to change something stock-wise, they need to change the look of it. You know, they brought out Big Sur and the buttons have changed again every time, every so many years, the, the Mac, they change one or two buttons here or there. Um, but for the iPhone, they haven't really. I mean, you look over the years, yes, they do, but it's not enough. They really need to make it go, oh, I love this. You know, people need to be, oh yeah. I know people don't buy iPhones because of buttons or what buttons look like, but it would make a big, I think it'd make a big, big difference if Apple did that. So anyway, guys, that's me talking about Apple CarPlay. If you have any questions, which probably no one will reply to this uh, video, but if you do and you've got any questions, please send a message to me on here um, and we can discuss it further or if there's good enough questions that I haven't covered on here, um, please let me know and I'll um, maybe do another video on it. Anyway guys, thanks very much, thanks for watching and I'll have a new video out soon. Cheers, bye bye.